Alright guys, so the Volatile Conduction mod has given me some interesting ideas that we can try out and build around for our classes. And only recently have I done a build around the mod for the top and bottom tree Arc Stormcall subclass. And the results were as I expected, a high risk and high reward. So I had another crazy thought to repeat the build again, but with the middle tree Tunnel of Control instead, and then use the Geomag Stabilizer's Exotic Boost to further increase the duration of our super. And the result of this has led to me a very powerful add or boss clearing build for those who are able to maintain the build in action. Hello everyone, Freedy here, here and welcome back to today's build session for Destiny 2. I hope you're all keeping safe out there, no matter where you are in the world. In today's video, we are going to be building around the classic but interesting mod, Volatile Conduction, and combine it with the much less popular subclass, Atomic of Control, to not only craft a super powerful glass cannon build, but to also get you out of your comfort zones and to try some more unique and wacky builds to spice up your enjoyment in game. And like always, if you have a build idea that you would like to share or if you've come across something that is interesting to explore, then type it down below in the comment section. I'll be sure to have a look at it and see if I can work my way around it. So starting things off, the subclass we will be using is the Tournament of Control, which will be the main bread and butter of the build setup and will be combined with the Geomag Exotic Boots for increased damage and duration, and the Volatile Super Mod for that extra damage upon critical health. Now, like I briefly explained, the subclass isn't that popular with the general players because of how limited its usage is, and its duration isn't as long compared to the top or bottom tree subclass. But what it does offer is the ability to deactivate a super mid-action, which no other subclass can currently do, it can offer a few benefits when you think about it. For example, quickly wiping out a large group of enemies in one go and then saving the rest for later. This can help when you're in a dire situation and don't have any heavy ammo to work with. This subclass is more handy for quick burst damage or full on super damage against bosses alike, and this is only really where it will shine the most. Plus, its subclass perks are quite good, but I feel like you would need to build around it to fully get the most out of them. Luckily for our end, Ionic Traits and Pulse Ray Perk will always be proccing because of the conditions we have to hit for them, which makes the build on a larger scale more useful for endgame now. Now as the build will focus on their super usage at all times high, making use of the Ionic Traits with his ability regen and some super ability mods of your choice can allow you to get your super back within a few seconds, and part of that is what we will be aiming for as best as we can. For the grenade, the Pulse Grenade is highly recommended as it's truly the best grenade to use for duration and damage in game, but the Storm Grenades are also very handy as well, although duration is over within a few seconds. For weapons, we're going to change it up a bit and use the Cold Heart Trace Rifle for once for its highly increased damage over time, something that fits the build well for its continuous damage over time. For the Prime and Heavy, we can be flexible, but I will give you some options to try out. Within the primary slot, I've gone with the Breach Light Sidearm with Warble Weapon and Outlaw. The simple and utmost use I'm going to be getting out of the weapon is when I run out of ammo for my secondary, or if I'm facing a Ultra, I want to add on extra damage thanks to the Warble Weapon's damage boost. Now, compared to using a shotgun instead, which has more stopping power, the Sidearm is more flexible in terms of how much ammo you can carry around, reload speed a lot more quicker, which is always a pro for any weapon, and thanks to the Warble Weapon perk, can allow me to stand my ground against tougher enemies a lot more easier. Truthfully, picking a sidearm as part of the loadout is highly recommended, as you will run out of ammo quickly, and you'll want a weapon that will support you for most of the content, as like I said, shotguns are great, but they don't have a high amount of ammo reserves available compared to a sidearm. For a secondary, I'm using the Cold Heart Trace Rifle, which is a weapon I haven't used since Curse of Osiris, but I have seen a lot of reports on weapon's performance for its continuous damage. Now, it's a weapon that I thought wasn't too exotic in design, first and foremost, and found it to be useful against the general ads, and that's it. But after seeing plenty of reports and builds based around it, the weapon is incredibly powerful against bosses or ultras, generally any enemies with large crit spots or large bodies, as its damage increases the longer it stays on them, and I can't genuinely believe I've slept on this weapon for so long to not notice how genuinely strong it is, but that won't be the case anymore. This weapon here pairs very, very well with the build for the glass kind of setup in mind, as once I use my super against a boss, 
I can then switch to my secondary and continue with the DPS until my super gets back up again. This weapon here pairs very well with the build for the glass cannon setup in mind, as once I use my super against the boss, I can then heavily switch to my secondary and continue the DPS until my super gets back up again. Think of the build like this, a giant Kamehameha blast from our character from near death and putting in as much damage as you can in one go. A very good weapon to use all round and definitely has its place in most builds. For heavy, I'm going to be using the Falling Guillotine Sword with Whirlwind Blade and Energy Transfer and will use this as a failsafe when being surrounded or charged at by Ultra's Doom Majors. I will at times use this against bosses if the opportunity arrives, but I would like to keep my distance as best as I can as I don't want to trigger the Volatile Conduction mod until the time comes. Plus, I don't want to use it up front as I won't be able to trigger the Geomag Exotic trait for the extended super. Except from that, if you want to focus on more long range approaches, considering the Cold Heart can allow you to stand your ground fairly well, then a grenade launcher with Spike Grenade or Clown Cartridge is a great choice to go ahead and pick. For our stats, we have two main focuses that will go into the creation of the build, and that is the Discipline and the Intelligence stat. As the focus on the builders make full use of a super with the damage increasement as well, we will need to cater to two stats so we can have an efficient build up of energy on the go. I've placed my discipline stat at the 70 ranges for a 45 second cooldown, although my stat can be increased to the 80 ranges for a 41 second cooldown instead, if I mass work my helmet or boots. This is as far as you need to go, as our subclass perk, Ionic Trace, will provide the rest of the ability buff as you naturally grind out kills. Our intelligence is in the 50 ranges for a 4 minutes 31 second cooldown, and this doesn't need to be extended any more than that, as we're going to be using the Ashes to Ashes mod to further increase our super via grenade kills. As you can see, the high regen rate for our grenades, combined with the Ashes to Ashes mod and Ionic Trace perk, will allow you to constantly have a surplus of grenades at your disposal, while also feeding back into your super regen. Of course, if you find that the stat is too low, then I would recommend you switch it up to increase the attention stat by another 10 to 20 stats, depending on what is best for you. Left over, our resilience is at the 50 ranges, which is a common number you need to reach if you want to survive an extra deadly hit at times, and our recovery is at the 60 ranges, which, once again, is always great to improve on and also offer further increasement in rift speed for our character's natural affinity. For armor, you need to have this season or next season mod slot for the Charge with Light mod, or if you wish, you can use the Sustained Charge mod to correspond with your secondary, but you'll need to have a Solar Affinity piece to pull this all off. You will also need to have a Void Affinity piece for the Protective Light mod, which is a must have for the build if you can, and also another Solar Affinity piece for the Supercharge mod, however, you can leave this out and not have it at all, and you only need to have one charge with light to proc a volatile conduction. For exotic, no specific affinity is required for a boot unless you wish to have your corresponding weapon. Except from that, nothing else here needs to be expanded on. Now, here are the mods we currently are using, which I will go into a bit more depth afterwards, so you get a general idea as to how everything works for this weird but fantastic glass cannon build. Head, Discipline and Taking Charge mod. Arm, Resilience, Auto Rifle Loader and Supercharged mod Chest, Discipline, Rifle Reserves and Protective Light mod Leg, Discipline mod Bond, Concussive Dampener, Assets to Assets and Volatile Conduction mod So just like the other similar builds I've done, this build will provide a massive damage boost upon reaching critical health which will generally be all the time depending on the content you play and like a true glass cannon build you'll probably end up dying a lot from being surrounded and shot at. Now just like the Storm Bracers build, its users will be split into two areas, add some bosses, and depending on where you take it, will depend on how much damage you want to do to your surrounding area, if for example you're in a desperate situation to need to use it, or would rather use it against a boss for maximum DPS. And to be honest, whichever one you pick will not go against the build, as you can in fact use the super while taking on adds and still trigger, Volatile Conduction mid super. This is handy for a number of reasons, as I can use my super to take on minor, major and ultras, and if I trigger my VC in the process, I can then use my super against the boss for leftover damage and still extend it thanks to my exotic. So overall the super isn't going to waste. Alternatively, I could use it purely against the boss or ultra instead, and then against the adds with whatever is left over. 
or better off just tell me super off once I've taken the boss down and save the rest for another time. The cult heart is also something far to me. With 101 lives in the magazine, you can easily rack up a high amount of damage against bosses to miners with very effective damage over time. Or better off, use it against adds and actively activate your subclass perk, Ionic Trace, to gain ability energy back, which will feed back into your grenades to use, which is also linked into these Ashes to Assets mod for further Super Regen. Everything with the build will lead into the Super for maximum amount of damage, and all you need to do is take a bit of damage on your end to get that extra 30% damage buff. Pretty simple. Now of course, that's the thing. Activating VC is easy and anyone can achieve it. But the issue here is that if you don't have the protective light mod active when using it, depending on the content you're playing, you could get utterly destroyed mid super while this is happening. And this is one of the common downsides towards your use this mod and build in general, as you need to have the protective light mod to give you an extra boost in defense, just so you can survive an extra amount of time and damage against certain enemies and encounters. Like I said earlier, you could use a super on pocket mid action, but this will vary as 9 times out of 10, once you're in your super, you'll pretty much wipe out the majority of ads within your radius, unless you're up against a boss for example. And of course there's always better builds to go with that will provide a higher DPS and burst, all in one go. But for the players that are more keen to try something new out, and want to try an effective glass cannon build that they've never tried before, something that they want to get into now while the season is still ongoing. This build will not fail you. Well, until you get cornered and killed of course, or unless your protective light runs out. But seriously, give this build a go, as it can carry you very far into the end game for newer or veteran players. And then basically tinker around with it from there. But it will not fail you, until it does, like it always does. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.